Hi folks, my name is Brian Bagwell, I'm the managing editor at PocketGamer.biz, uh, part of Steel Media and the organisers of Pocket Gamer Connect. Welcome! So, uh, can you start off and introduce yourself and your game? Hi, I'm Sophie Artemiji and I may pick up the game. It's about a woman who matches with her high school bully on a dating app and the chaos that kind of ensues. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a really interesting subject matter. What made you choose that uh, for your game? I saw a tweet that said, please don't sleep with your bullies and I thought, you can't tell me what to do. Like, what if I did? <laughs> and then uh, instead of sleeping with my bully, I decided to make a game about it, which was arguably a lot harder. Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. So what kind of a uh, sort of gameplay loop do you have going on in there? So it's a visual novel. We've got, um, you basically play by stalking her dating profile, going through it, talking to her matches, including her bully. And the crux of it is kind of talking to this bully character and figuring out will or won't they hook up. Um, yeah, we did some really cool graphics. There are a few short cutscenes in. Uh, sound designed by Itzel, who's over there and who's amazing. Uh, yeah, we're really proud of what we've done here. Awesome. It sounds like quite a um, difficult subject matter in a way. Um, have you had any challenges sort of, I guess, writing it in that regard? Um, well, it's interesting. For example, uh, it was a bit difficult getting through the app store's vetting process because they're very vague about mm. what they can or can't do. Uh, luckily, uh, the Peggy ratings in the UK are a lot more clear and we're very safely within Peggy 16. Okay. Um, also, just generally there's a lot of uh, academic thought behind the sex positive movement and so there's been a a good foundation for us to build on, which is lovely. Awesome. Uh, so, in terms of a uh, kind of monetization strategy for the game, what are you going for? Like premium, free to play? What, what are you thinking? Uh, we're talking to some publishers, and uh, we think it's probably going to be premium, but we're open to any strategy as long as it gets in front of the people that we think would enjoy it. So, just a final question: How have you been enjoying Pocket Gamer so far? It's been so fun. Everyone's been so lovely, and uh, yeah, I don't really get enough chance to talk to business people and it really kind of takes the intimidation out of it just seeing them and seeing that they're just very chill people as well. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so to start off, uh, can you just introduce yourself and your company? Yeah, sure. So my name is Dean Day. Um, I'm CEO of uh, Black Smoke Studios, which is a development studio based in Kayani in Finland. Awesome, and what kind of games is it that you're working on at the moment? So uh, we're currently developing um, a Battle Royale title, but we're trying to uh, broaden the genre a little bit. So it's a Battle Royale that doesn't include any firearms, um, it's something that's trying to move away from the, the classic experience of, say, PUBG, uh, Warzone or, or Apex. It's something a bit different, a bit more melee combat and vehicle combat. Awesome, and what kind of uh, design challenges? I mean, I'm guessing there have been some, trying because it's a genre that's totally kind of steeped in sort of ranged combat, I mean, I'm guessing it was quite tricky designing something purely melee focused. Yeah, so um, one of the reasons we wanted to move away from um, ranged combat was more than anything was because of the frustrations that I felt with that. Um, so you know, generally, uh, battle royale game sessions are half hour, sometimes 40, 45 minutes, and you know, to, to spend 10, 15 minutes finding loot, finding weapons, and for someone to shoot you that you generally didn't even see that are 400 meters away is an entirely frustrating experience. Um, you know, two years over COVID, people are playing a lot more, and we're finding that some of the experiences uh, from some games on the market, they're very frustrating, you know. Uh, I myself, I'm a, I'm a big, um, I don't want to name any titles, but I'm a big Battle Royale player, mm. play on PC, mouse and keyboard, and you, you play to relax, you play with friends that have time, a good time, and, you know, nine times out of ten, you, you find yourself more raging than ready to mm. flip tables because of the game or because of, you know, bad timing, or whatever it is, and within the game, it's killed you instantly. Um, so we're, we think that with Melee Combat, you have more control of that. Um, you know, you can see people coming, or you can be attacked from behind without being killed within two, three seconds, for example. And then you can react to that and then and try to turn that situation around. Um, and it also makes decisions um, within strategy more important. So, within a, a normal battle royale game, if I see someone really far away, trust me, I'm going to start firing at them for no reason. But in this one, if you see someone that's far away, you have to then decide, okay. 
do I want to pursue that player? You know, do I want to jump in the car? Have I got the fuel? Have I got the resources? Or do I need to? Would I rather carry on looting or hide from that player? And you know, you can make more decisions within the game. And I think that's that's you know, bringing more to the table and more interesting to to players outside of just first person shooters. Oh, sounds great. Uh, so just to wrap up, um, how have you been enjoying Pocket Gamer Connect this year? Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's been like you know, two years. Uh, and when it was announced, I, I brought my ticket straight away. And then um, it was pushed back for oh, hours. So gutted that it was pushed back by month because of um, the, the pickup in, in cases. Um, but yeah, I I missed it. I if you'd have asked me two years ago, I wouldn't have said this. But now, yeah, I definitely missed it. I'm glad to be back. Um, and hopefully, there's a lot more to follow this year, and we can just kind of get back to normal. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. So, um, obviously, this is kind of the first big live event you've had in a while. What were the kind of challenges involved in running that? Uh, that everybody's absolutely terrified of travelling and being in a big room with other people. Um, yeah, the pandemic has not been kind. Um, over the last couple of years, we shifted to an entirely virtual format, and that's been fantastic. But I think everybody's ready to kind of get back out. You know, I, I love networking, I love events, I, I really enjoy being able to sort of meet people and discover new projects, new uh, companies out there. And I think everybody's just kind of ready. Uh, but obviously the challenges were huge. Uh, we, we've had to make sure that we have all of the sort of the, the cleansing facilities, hand sanitizer, masks, baby wipes everywhere. We've got a, a colour coding system so that you can indicate with your lanyard whether you're open to fist bumps or elbow bumps or just stay the hell away. Um, so yeah, it, it's not been business as normal, but uh, I think we're, we're finding ways to adapt and make people feel safe and let them choose how, how involved they want to get. Uh, so, to start off, uh, could you just introduce yourself and your game? I'm Henry Koskinen from Finland, and my game is still a hobby game. It's called Last Drop, Legend of Zepo, but we are growing bigger all the time. Awesome. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about the game. Uh, what kind of game is it? It takes you to Finland, 1994. This is actually the place where I grew up as a child. And uh, it's a story-driven game, like a Tarantino movie in the game, open world, one player premium product and uh, it's very fun to play there's a nice story but also in the background it tells a story about alcoholism as a disease but we don't rub it to your face but mm. it's there the message because we saw those stories when we were younger at this place so based on true stories oh, that sounds really cool um, I briefly mentioned Tarantino there is there a lot of, uh, a lot of action in this game then? yeah it's more like the plot is so twisted and interesting, like Tarantino movies. They are like, when you look at the movie, you it's so interesting always. Not about the violence so much, maybe, like Tarantino has. There is violence, but not because of violence. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned, you know, alcoholism and issues like that. It seems like quite a hard hit plot. Um, so how did you go about sort of a ta tackling that subject matter in, I guess, kind of a respectful way? Yeah, that is something very hard. <laughs> and I know that that will, I will hear about it at some point, but uh, I think that we have a good approach. People who play it will see it, then they understand. Awesome. Uh, just to wrap up, um, how have you been enjoying the Pocket Gamer Conference so far? Full of speaking yes. two days, and actually I was taking a part, part in the India game pitching competition. So mm. five o'clock today we know who won. Nineteen oh. games. Spicy, spicy. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.
I can say that. I was going to touch on that actually. Obviously, Metaverse is a huge thing at the moment, and it has been for about the past year. You sort of changed the course of the design of Avicam Life at all in response to that trend. A lot of stuff that people are talking about the Metaverse, we already have on Avicam Life. So, moving from space to space, scene to scene, uh, using items from one scene to another, from one experience to another, having that ownership of your avatar and what your avatar means to you, and building bonds with communities, creating and finding your own community where you can express yourself and be happy, it's already there. So it's pretty much the, the mainstream of Avakin in the last seven years, it's essentially the community. And how you integrate in those communities when you join the, the game. Uh, so obviously that's going really well. Uh, have you got any new games on the horizon or is it just kind of all, all Avakin Life? No, we are really, really focused on Avakin Life. Uh, game, when you say new stuff, yeah, we do publish twice a week still. So there is always new experience coming up. And we treat them pretty much as new content, new mini games, mini experience yeah. inside. Uh, the game itself, so that's why we keep our game fresh. Awesome. Uh, in terms of monetization strategies, what kind of what do you go for in African Life in that respect? No. African Life is focused on uh, it's a free to play first of all. So obviously you have the soft currency inside, you have everything that you can buy through the coins, and then we have the IAPs uh, focusing all type of players inside the game. Ads wise and advertising wise, it's not, we are not very strong over there. We have a couple of rewarding stuff, we have a few sub videos for you to keep going on the next action. But that's pretty much it. I think there is a lot to explore still on that area. Uh, so, how are you enjoying Pocket Gamer so far? Definitely, yeah. it's good to be back after two years. It's amazing. Seeing this energy, and I think there is no better moment for the industry. Yeah, after the pandemic and with all, all the stuff that happened, the industry is on a high, it's on a peak, so everyone is super excited. Yeah. Alright, well, thank you very much for your Thank you. Alright, uh, so just to start off, uh, can you introduce yourself and your game? Yeah, so my name is uh, Antti Hätinen, I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO and founder of P8, P8Z Game Studios and, and uh, currently we are developing uh, uh, Castle War, uh, Idol Island, uh, a game for Android and uh, iOS and, and uh, this is our new title uh, which will actually come out on m uh, March 1st, uh, so in three weeks and, and uh, so this is done in cooperation with our friend, French uh, publisher, Plugin Digital. And, and uh, so the core idea of the game, the game is uh, that. Uh, oh, sorry. So that you build your castle. So uh, there are different kinds of weapons like uh, catapults and uh, ballistas and, and uh, then you get uh, different kind of walls and uh, also troops and uh, enhancements to your castle and, and uh, uh, the actual, uh, actual battle, battle is uh, uh, auto battle so that uh, there are two uh, castles from real players uh, that are controlled by AI and they uh, fight fight each other out uh, who wins and 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 yeah that's it basically so that you can this is basically a, like a little bit like a football manager but this yeah. is like a ca castle, castle manager yeah. <laughs> nice. cool. and, and uh, so basically uh, the, this has a fairly good uh, like a KPI so that the average play time has been up to 55 minutes per day oh, really? so it's uh, a like a uh, good uh, there's a, a lot of traction traction to the game and then so uh, as I said uh, this is uh, actually this is currently on pre-order on uh, Apple Store and Google Play so you can actually already sign up uh, for, for, for downloading the game 
on the on the March 1st when it comes ho hopefully out and then uh, yeah so that, that that's 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 it uh, we have also a trailer uh, of, of the uh, that you can uh, check out from you YouTube so it's uh, awesome yeah. well, the game looks great uh, got to say and what were the kind of um, inspirations behind it like did you look at other idol games or what, where did you get your inspiration from yeah so basically uh, Basically, the, uh, uh, of course, this is uh, from uh, uh, actually the inspiration came from a Commodore 64 game games. Uh, nice. There's a there's a game called uh, Art Artillery Duel that uh, is a fairly old game. So it's a uh, the, well that was the inspiration, but uh, we are still actually missing the destructible terrain over there that will be probably the, in a, a version three uh, that is uh, coming coming out in the next years. But yeah, that's uh, that's the long story. Yeah. Um, and you have kind of a, a monetization strategy in mind for your game. Yeah, it's uh, free to play. So basically, we have rewarded ads over there, and then also in-app purchases. And then uh, so you can of course uh, make your well progression faster by by buying uh, more chests and uh, other other items. But also, you know, you don't need to pay pay to play the game. Uh, you can also, uh, well, you can watch, watch some ads, or, or you can actually also disable the ads if you want to. Awesome. And uh, just to wrap up, um, have you been enjoying the Pocket Gamer event so far? Yeah, this has been great. So it's uh, great to see uh, like uh, other colleagues and the game game uh, studios after a few years. So I'm looking forward to uh, get uh, uh, to attend more more events like Pocket Game Connects and. Uh, also, uh, we are based in Helsinki, Finland, so Pocket Games is coming to Helsinki in uh, September. So welcome to, our, to see our office over there in, in Helsinki city center. Awesome, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Please download Castle War on <laughs> Apple Store and Play uh, So, what do you, how do you think the show's been going then, uh, as you've been here the past couple of days? Yeah, I, I've been here throughout, I, I compared to the, the first morning, I've just done a fireside chat. Um, it's been wonderful, it's been wonderful, because the, the one constant in games is change. You know, the whole market is constantly evolving and being pushed forward, not just by new devices, but by new tools, technologies, techniques, business models, distribution platforms, the whole thing. And so, seeing what people are doing, and seeing how they're responding to all of these new opportunities like blockchain, NFTs, the metaverse, hyper casual just kind of came out of nowhere and took the entire world by storm. You know, the next billion gamers in the world are not going to be coming to console, they're going to be coming to mobile. And that puts us in a very nice position indeed. Could you introduce yourself and your game? Hi there, well, my name is Quang, um, my company is Asobi Tech, and we're making a game called Diffused. It's a new game for the Game Boy in 2022. Uh, so basically, we make games for old hardware, uh, and Nintendo Game Boy is what we're making at the moment. Uh, the game is about a little robot who's a, a bomb disposal robot. Um, he ends up on the beach, trying to uh, be surrounded by bombs. Uh, it's a turn-based action puzzle game, so you take your time to go through and defuse the bombs, nothing happens until you move, so if you don't move then the bombs will count down. Uh, the bombs all have fuses, uh, each time you move they count down, uh, the idea is to get, them, get to them, check them before they count down so you get enough energy to escape the level, get to the next level and then rescue your friends. Uh, we're looking to uh, release at the end of February. Awesome. And um, so, I guess the first, you know, developing for the original Game Boy, that is very unusual. Like, what, what made you decide to do that? Um, a, a number of events happened. Um, so I used to make game games back in 2000 uh, for a living, and um, we were 
in mobile and PC games since then. Uh, during the pandemic, various things have happened, and I kind of fell out of love of making games. I found my old source code for the Game Boy, and I remembered how much I enjoyed making games for Game Boy. Like this is reignited really my love for making games again. So we should make this basically fun, I guess. Um, and what we've done is we go back to making mobile and, and PC games after that. Awesome, man. So I mean, I'm guessing there's a whole range of like challenges with making Game Boy games that just wouldn't apply to kind of mobile PC gaming. Oh, for sure. Um, the severe li memory limitations, graphics as well, things like that. Um, the base RAM is 32 kilobytes, so yeah. not much space to work with. Um, the resolution is 160 pixels by 144 pixels, four shades of grey. Yeah, it's, it's quite a limited machine, but there's a joy in the limitation. Awesome. Uh, so in terms of the uh, kind of distribution of your games, do you tend to do them digitally, like as ROMs, or do you actually create the physical cartridges? Yeah, well? so we do that both. Um, we physically make cartridges. We did a game last year for Game Boy, uh, Super Chip FDX. Um, I, 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 think I did it personally myself. Uh, this year we'll sign with a Ink Bay Games or a game with distributor, and they're going to be doing all the physical side of things. But also, a big play for emulators and like that, so the problem will also be available. Awesome, man. So I think just last year, uh, the Analog Pocket came out. Obviously, that's a massive thing for uh, kind of this kind of scene, the Game Boy scene. And do you think that might encourage maybe a new generation of uh, retro hardware developers? Oh, for sure. In, in the last couple of years, we've seen a huge rise in the Game Boy, uh, love for the Game Boy. With lots of mods, with modern screens, with IPS screens, um, and obviously the Analog Pocket's come out. So there, uh, there's already a great nostalgia for people my age for the Game Boy. But there's a whole range of younger people that get into Game Boy because it's retro chic, I guess, um, and we showed that there's a different a grown audience for old, old games and new machines. No, I'll be back. New games yeah. and old machines. Awesome. Uh, so just final question. Um, how have you been enjoying uh, Pocket Gamer so far? Uh, Pocket Gamer has been great. Uh, there's always a wonderful event. I still my first Pocket Gamer event. Um, and it's great to come back and be part of it. There's uh, lots of stuff going on, lots of talks, um, lots of great games to see. It's a good event. Thanks, and thank you very much. No problem. Awesome. Uh, so as someone with your kind of experience and a uh, position in the games industry, what do you think the future of monetization is in games? Hybrid. This is one of the, this is one of the big, big things that everybody needs to realise, is that it's that no longer just one business model. You know, way back in the midst of time when I started, if you wanted to play a game, you had to buy it from a shop, right? So the retail model was the only one there. Now you've got so many different opportunities and different ways of monetizing your game. You know, it's, you've got advertising, incentivized advertising, interstitial advertising, audio advertising, in-game advertising. Um, you've got in-app purchases, you've got free-to-play, you've got subscription, premium content. The list goes on and on and on. And it's not one size fits all. You can pick and you can choose different types of monetization, different types of model, depending on the game, or even have different models within the same game to make sure you're hitting the widest possible audience. For developers, it should be Nirvana, rather than just the, I suppose we'll have to make it free to play and then die penniless. Yeah, I'm Eftin Tanko, founder of Playwright Games, and we work on hyper casual games. And I'm Christina Trenko, the founder of Playwright Games. We make fun new hyper casual games. Awesome. Uh, so, what kind of monetization strategy do you tend to go for in your games? Typically ads, definitely typically ads, especially in the puzzle games, but for the action games we are also trying to build a meta game that can support the hybrid model, so for example sell some in-game items. But even for the puzzle games, how you start to think about bundles of hints that you can go and buy for your money and actually keep the hints and use them whenever you decide like typical casual games. Awesome. Uh, so you mentioned that you kind of split into like puzzle games and some more wacky experimental stuff. So is the studio kind of divided then or do you all collaborate together? on the two halves at once? Well, we are just the two designers, yeah. right? and we sit, to. Yeah, we sit next nice. to one another, so we just split our work, and then, nice. yeah, obviously... We obviously, we help each other, though, but I'm kind of more focused on the, let's call them women-oriented games, more satisfying in uh, placement on the board, more satisfying to look at, mm. while he's more about the wacky stuff. I like, 
Yeah. Like explosions and stuff like that, yeah. Do me all. Yeah, especially if, if, if it makes boom, yeah, but we love it, yeah. Nice, um, so yeah, how are you enjoying the Pocket Gamer conference so far? Uh, totally, yeah, really yeah. good, super productive, nice talks, gaming, yeah, yeah. easy. Yeah, it's going sure. to stick around for the next day as well. Nice to see people face to face, yeah. Yeah, totally, yeah. Awesome, well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank yeah. You. Awesome, uh, just to wrap up, uh, what's been your personal highlight from the show so far? Um, so I chaired a, a panel on the future of blockchain and NFTs last night, and we, we looked at the future, you know, so it wasn't about, oh, is it real, is it not real, or scams, here's a chimp gift. Um, it basically accepted, okay, this is coming, this is a, an underlying fundamental technology that is going to radically impact not just games, but the whole of the digital world. So what does the future look like in five years? Um, and it was one of the most illuminating, in-depth, and I guess, um, expert discussions I've had, because we were talking to some really fantastic people. You know, it's like we had the CEO of Congregate, it's we had um, people who are really making this work for them now, and not in an exploitative Ponzi scheme type way, but in a real sustainable, scalable business. Um, and so actually seeing the excitement, the enthusiasm, the passion for taking this forward and making it a part of games is something that I personally find incredibly encouraging and, um, you know, just a delight to hear and be a part of. Awesome, well, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.